It would have been ridiculous for the police to have reopened the investigation into Andrew Newton, the man accused of trying to murder Norman Scott some 40 years ago. It would have been a complete waste of police time, given that more than half of the people involved in the affair are now dead, including the key figure of Jeremy Thorpe, and the subject was only back in the public arena because of a rather good dramatisation of the events. Back in the late 70s, as a young researcher at London Weekend Television, I had dinner with Scott in Devon just before the trial. And I have to say, I found him a rather sad figure who loved suddenly being the centre of attention. A few weeks later, of course, everyone was astonished when the British establishment managed to get Thorpe off the charge of conspiracy to murder Scott when, as the BBC drama showed, the evidence against him was pretty clear. The interesting question is, could the establishment do the same thing today? Or has the world really changed? So, so my default response to these sorts of questions is to say, if there's a plausible explanation for something, always choose the plausible explanation over the conspiracy. Um, no matter how, uh, uh, let's say, implausible the plausible, plausible explanation may seem. Right, so uh, we had these sorts of conspiracies uh, over the death of Diana, and of course there's the, uh, more recently, the, the death of uh, Dr Kelly uh, after the dossier scandal of the weapons of mass destruction. I think the world has changed. I don't think even actually using the word the establishment <clears throat> makes much, much uh, sense these days because um, I think the way in which our democracy has evolved um, is that the, there isn't one interest uh, governing uh, governing uh, our polity. And I worry when we talk about the establishment that the slippery slope from that statement to uh, finances controlling the world to Jewish conspiracy theories isn't too far away. I'm not saying, of course, you're doing any of that. Of course not. Um, but I think it's re-emerging of late, both on the far left and the far right. And actually, one of the interesting things that uh, our political ex extremes agree on is uh, that uh, there is some, some form of shady banking conspiracy so, controlling... So under, this, under the, the Thorpe affair or the Perfumo affair, yeah. you don't think there was an establishment position? Well, in those days, perhaps. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think what I'm saying is I think, I think our democracy's evolved away from that. Yeah. I agree with you on conspiracy theories, actually. I always think that, that actually if you ignore the conspiracy and look at the cock-up theory, it works yeah. better, yeah. usually. It's always cock-up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can we just remind everybody of what actually happened during the Thorpe trial, which were, not to dig deep, deep, too deeply into it, you know, we saw the police got rid of files, they didn't publish letters, they didn't interview even Jeremy Thorpe, but in his summing up, Judge Cantley did not hold back when it came to directing the jury. He said, I now turn to the evidence of Mr Norman Scott. You will remember him well. A hysterical, warped personality, accomplished bunger and very skillful at exciting and exploiting sympathy. He is a crook. He is a fraud. He is a sponger. Wow. He is a whiner. <laughs> he is a parasite. You must not think that because I am not concealing my opinion of Mr Scott, I am suggesting <laughs> you should not believe him. That is not for me. I am not expressing any opinion. <laughs> I'm not really. say what he really thinks. <laughs> but you know, but yeah. the thing is, it could, I, do, I don't believe for a second it could happen. Now, back then, the establishment could protect its <clears> own. <throat> so these yeah. days, because of the, the press that you don't have much time for, Greg, it could never happen now because of the media and because of social media. There's too... I, think it could. I don't think it, I think there's way too bright a light that shines on everything now that it couldn't be hap it happen. Imagine today if a, if a young man went into a police station and said a prominent politician had raped him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's the I, other way around these, these days. But, no, but if that had happened, that As politician would be, be arrested... Very quickly. That politician would be arrested within the hour, guilty or not. They'd be arrested. And, and I think what happened because of the Thorpe thing and because of David Kelly and, and because Savile and, and, and Cyril Smith got away with stuff for so long, I think the police now go the other way. I yeah. think there's been an absurd yeah, overreaction, right. as we could tell yeah. by all the lies and th fantasies too. Isn't there a difference between the police and the judiciary? Uh, well, back then know, there wasn't. It was it's all still about, together. It's no. still about who is the judge and who is... So you have just reminded me, so I don't know, Michelle, maybe you want to come in here, but you, but you have just reminded me, actually. Um, when you say the difference between the police and the judiciary, there was, and I've said this before, of course, I've had this debate on, on the pledge before, that there was a cover-up 
with the grooming gang scandals. Of course. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah, on the yeah, tip yeah. of my tongue yeah. then, because yeah. I was just yeah. thinking, yeah. you know, I'm too young to remember the, the episode that we're currently discussing, but, you know, when I'm listening and, and thinking about cover-ups and all the rest of it, I do think of Roch well, uh, Rochdale, Telford, all those kind of places, because I'm sitting here thinking, well, actually, there was something very terrible going on for a very long time involving many, many yeah. people yeah. that wasn't properly um, investigated, that wasn't properly um, transparent and communicated properly. And there's a lot of people that feel let down today yeah. because yeah. of that. Well, go back to Bloody Sunday, <clears throat> go back to Hillsborough. I mean, these things still do... There was do, a huge cover-up in Hillsborough. There, Hillsborough yeah, yeah. was a massive cover-up by Hillsborough the police. Police aren't yes, they? Yes, and, well... No, Long I time ago, and that's why I don't think... Yeah. I think the, Rod, the, the Rochdale so thing... But it did come out, didn't it? But look, but, but look what's happening Eventually. now. And it wasn't Rochdale like this. Was... I mean, let's, let's have a look at this clip, cos uh, Tom Mangold is asking uh, Sir Randolph Bacon some questions about what, what that kind of cover-up could look like. We know that eventually the file finished up in the, in the safe uh, of the Assistant Commissioner of Crime. What about that safe? What did it look like? Uh, a sinister safe? A huge safe or what? Well, it was a whacking great old-fashioned iron and steel safe that stood up on a, a, a very substantial wooden stand and uh, it contained nothing but files. We never put money in it or anything like that. And it contained nothing but files. And what kind of files are we talking about? Files on whom? Well, the kind of file that we're talking about now. When you Things that were going to create a public scandal. I'm just wishing we all still spoke like that. Yeah. But, uh, just, so very quick, because Rachel wants to say something. I just want to say that, that, that I think when I referenced the Rotherham thing, it wasn't a cover-up in the sense of locking files deliberately away in a safe, yeah. that style of cover-up. I think it was more out of fear. No, Hillsborough. It was, the, it was a politically correct cover-up. Yeah. 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 Ra Rachel wants to... What yeah. I think we can take away from this is when it's the establishment covering for its own, I think these things can still happen. Uh, but I also feel that what we've learnt from the last 30 years is that if you're... A, you know, Liverpool fans or your underage girls in, in you know, market towns, mm. you can be thrown to the wolves yeah. and you will, you know, they will not have your back. But, you know, Jeremy Thorpe, leader of the Liberal Party, an uh, uh, old Etonian, he had to be... Well, he, well, also, David, can I just bring another clip? A clip? I mean, David Steele, who, who was the, later the leader of the Liberal Party, was asked this week, did he think there had been a cover-up? All of the evidence which is now being brought out makes it sound quite likely, doesn't it? I mean, it was in the midst of a whole lot of other scandals and uh, I think the establishment felt that they couldn't afford another one. We, we made a documentary at London Weekend on, on the affair and on the day that he that thought was found not guilty, he phoned the company and said, if you put that out, we'll get you. And it never went out. I hope you've still got yeah. it. I don't know where it is. It's probably, I mean, London Weekend has been taken over so many times since then. <laughs> but you know, this, this, this cover-up went. This cover-up went. Quick, sorry, I have to make a correction very quickly before oh. we carry on. It's just on the point of the police. I think uh, they were found guilty of um, not found guilty of manslaughter. I think it was unlawful Who? killing the police in Hillsborough. In uh, Hillsborough, uh, no. Uh, but there is now an investigation. Certain yeah. there are now investigations and charges against certain policemen. Yeah. Okay. But you know, the, in, in this, in the Thorpe thing, this this file was passed. It went to Scotland Yard. It went to Special Brands. It went to MI5, and then it came back down. And and every prime minister knew about the cover up. And some of them are rumoured to have been tempted to use it. We don't know if that's true or not. But Harold Wilson was supposed to be going to release it when it looked like the Tories were going to do a pact with the Libs. Edward Heath knew about it as well. And and so all of that. So so subsequent prime ministers. Well, this is pre 1979. This, this when is, the actual trial yeah. took place, yes, so they, it all came out. They in the all trial. knew. Then they knew about this file. Yeah. They knew that MI5 had the file. The file was then kept in this the office that he's talking about in the <laughs> safe. So, so yeah. many people. I don't think you would get away with that kind that that kind of cover up today. Oh. That oh, I'm not sure. if, you, if there's been a court case. I mean, look what happened there. There was a court case, and they were found not guilty. He was found not guilty of conspiracy to murder. I don't think many many journalistic organisations would then. Run that. It would but obviously you, find. But you would never one. have a judge today making that kind of summing up. Well, not as, not as blatant not as, blatant as that. Blatant. But you can still get pretty uh, opinionated judges. 